Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're going to be reviewing a fully loaded 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee Trailhawk. First and foremost, though, a huge shout out and thank you to the Larry H. Miller Jeep Chrysler here in Provo, Utah, for giving me some time with this Grand Cherokee. This one is available for sale for the time being, so if you're interested, I'm going to include a link to their inventory in the description down below. And then on a side note, if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below as well. Let's get into it. So under the hood, we have a Natchi aspirated 3.6 liter V6 that goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. It's good for about 295 horsepower and then 260 pound feet of torque with fuel economy being 19 around town and then 26 on the highway. You can also get a hybrid powertrain with the Trailhawk, the 4xe, and then also a 5.7 liter Natchi aspirated V8 as well. So this review's gonna be a little bit different compared to my normal reviews because the dealership's about to close and well, Hopefully we can finish this before that happens. <laughs> Anyways, you guys can see here with the decal on the hood, this is supposed to reduce glare, especially when you're like cresting a mountain. And also it has the Trailhawk logo on it, which is a pretty cool feature. And then coming down below, you guys can see the LED lights. Now the daytime ring lights are actually orange with the Trailhawk, which is a fun little feature. And then notice here with Jeep's signature front grille, we also have a front camera. And then notice the red outlining there on the Jeep logo. And you can see here with the Toex, they're red. Now the red signifies this is a Trailhawk with either the 5.7 Hemi or the 3.6 liter V6. If the Toex are blue, it's a 4 by E. And notice here how it's been sculpted for approach angle. We have 11.3 inches of ground clearance with the Trailhawk. When you have the air suspension fully raised, like where this is at from a position perspective. And I think it's just such a cool looking vehicle. 265, 60, 18 is the tire and wheel setup in the front and over in the rear as well. You have these cool off-roader type wheels and look how aggressive those tires are. Now here's a quick look at the air suspension fully flexed out and then you guys can see here with the fender flare. Notice that it contrasts nicely to the red on this one and then we've got a trail rated badge and you guys can see with the Grand Cherokee logo there got a little American flag. Notice the mirror's been blacked out and then you guys can see here with the gray trim around the windows. And then here's your full side view again. You gotta remember this is in the top ride height setting. And then popping into the rear. We've got independent front and rear suspension if you guys are wondering. And then I love the taillights on the new Grand Cherokee. I think they look really cool with how it all flows together. Notice with the Jeep logo again with the red and then same thing with the 4x4 badge and then you've got the red recovery hook here on the rear and then of course we have our not so subtle Trailhawk badge. Now here's a quick look at the key fob. You guys can see remote starting in the opening for the hatch Jeep logo there on the back. Notice storage space is really good here in the Grand Cherokee. Regular spare down below and then notice here with the 12 volt but this is one of the big benefits of the Grand Cherokee is you just have a big trunk space and especially with the Trailhawk right you've got enough space to take all your adventure gear and then just press that and then that'll lower the hatch back down it always takes a second to pop down that's probably the worst view ever because of the sun but yeah that's the rest of the rear and then popping in this is my favorite part of the, about the Trailhawk is the interior so notice here with the sunshade and you can see with the darker trim that goes across. And I love the red stitching in the Trailhawk. I think it looks really cool. Again, 4xE will have blue stitching. And then notice how it's perforated. And I love the inserts here on the seats. And then you guys can see we've got some vents here in the back. Notice we got heated seats, USB's full power outlet as well. And you can easily fit adults there in the back seating area. We'll go over the window sticker in a little bit. Now notice with the front door panel how it's identical in terms of the trim compared to the rear. Got all of our window controls. Notice front two are automatic and then you guys can see there for the mirror adjustment. Again, mirrors do have blind spot monitoring. And then here's the front seat. I love the Trailhawk logo right there. And then notice the rest of the stitching and then perforated all down the center. Power adjustments and pedal layouts down below. Got our hood latch release, parking brake. Notice the light controls. And then you guys can see here with the red stitching on the dash and around the vents. And let's pop in. Ooh. Well, if I don't say so myself, we'll turn on the ventilated seat. Anyways, here is the steering wheel. You've got nice padding all around. Notice the red contrasted stitching. And then you guys can see the silver trim here. Notice another Trailhawk logo. This one does have adaptive cruise control, rated controls in the back, notice with the paddle shifters. And you got some controls for the center stack, turn signal stock, windshield wiper stock. And overall, I think they did a good job with the design on the steering wheel and you know, some darker elements as part of the Trailhawk package, right? 
Now we've got the full digital gauge cluster just like other Grand Cherokee models. Notice it says that we are in the off-road too, which is the highest ride height setting. We do have some different drive modes. We have a sport, which will lower down the suspension. We have an auto snow, sand mud, and then we have a rock mode as well. I don't know if it'll actually show, no, it won't show the rock on that part, which is kind of funny. I'll show it to you guys in a second, but the modes describe what they do. And then again with the dash, you can see with all of the red, which is cool. And then notice here with our auto stop start, and then you guys can see with the lane departure, and then our, yeah, stability control right there, and then those hazard lights, and then parking sensors, and then this is for the passenger screen. This basically has the Jeep passenger screen set up where they can control stuff like radio controls and all that fun stuff. And then here is the infotainment screen. So first off, we pop into reverse. We do get a backup camera with trajectory lines. This has a full 360 camera system which is pretty dang cool, if you ask me. Now, something that I think is uh, pretty neat is first off, notice we can control the climate controls here. Dual zone climate, heated and cooled seats. Go to the vehicle tab. Notice we have our forward facing camera with the tire tread marks. So that definitely helps out quite a bit uh, with off-roading situations. Overall, infotainment system has really solid response time. Notice you can also turn on the passenger screen right here. It's got navigation, so everything you'd want. And then down below, you can see you've got analog controls for the radio, climate system, and then the heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel. And then this is our charging area with the wireless phone charger and all of the USB ports. And then here's that rock mode. You just do this dial for the drive modes. We do have a true four-wheel low because this is a four-wheel drive SUV, not an all-wheel drive crossover like most other vehicles in this segment. And then notice here with the dial, this is for the air suspension to raise and lower it. And then we've got our offered cruise control, and this does have a sway bar disconnect. It's really easy to use. Just press it, disconnected, that easy. And then just press it again, reconnected, that easy. And then you guys can see with the cup holders, and then notice here with the stitching, you can see with the storage space. And then leg glove box. And then finishing things up top, we've got a full panoramic sunroof. This also has a camera mirror. Like I said, this thing's fully loaded. Controls for the sunroof there at the top. And now we get a look at the sticker price of this fully loaded Trailhawk with the V6. So base MSRP, 54235 bucks for V6 Trailhawk. And actually most of the equipment you guys saw comes standard. Now the optional equipment on this one is the Advanced Pro Tech Group, which gives you the night vision thing that comes with the Grand Cherokees and some safety stuff like the 360 camera system. Luxury Tech Group 3, which gives you the hands-free lift gate and some other stuff like the wireless charging pad. And then we've got the dual panoramic sunroof Passenger display, a thousand bucks for that. And then the bigger screen, 1600 bucks. Total MSRP, $64,660. Warranty information, five year, 60,000 mile powertrain, three year, 36,000 mile on the basic. You probably need to play this video back at like half speed for you to be able to get everything. Well, let's take it and drive it. Let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's your visibility of the hood. Both the mirrors, which do have blind spot monitoring, because again, fully loaded throughout the rest of the rear. And with that being said, let's uh, set off here. And um, well, I'm deciding if I'm gonna do some shenanigans here. Ah, no, never mind. I won't do too much shenanigans. But setting off here in the Trailhawk, let's actually pop it down to the normal setting for the air suspension, because that's what you're gonna wanna drive it in on road. Uh, the thing that's great about air suspension is it's adjustable, but it does come at a cost when you have it in the higher ride height settings. There's not really a lot of compression because the bags are at the top, right? And so because there's not a lot of compression, what that basically means for you is if you go over bumps and everything, it's just gonna feel pretty uh, stiff. Now, Jeep has improved it quite a bit with this new air suspension system, but ultimately that's just an air suspension thing when you have it at the top. So if you wanna have compression, then just lower it down. And that makes sense for on-road driving. When you're off-road, it's not as important with like slow speed rock crawling because it's more about just slowly going, right? And so you're not gonna have to, you're not gonna need as much compression, right? Now in terms of how this drives on-road, it's amazing, um, very smooth. The new Grand Cherokee feels like a luxury vehicle. They've seriously improved uh, the Grand Cherokee so much with this new generation. There's a lot of people that still wanna go with the WK generation. And you know, fair enough, but what I can say is this new generation, I think it's the WL, let me know if I'm wrong. It's just so cozy. 
Seat comfort's really good with the Trailhawk too. The air conditioned seat function comes in clutch. I'm glad this is standard. Like a lot of off-roaders make you pay extra for air conditioned seats or they don't even offer it. So the fact this is standard, I think is pretty dang awesome. And we're gonna pop it into the sport mode. So it'll actually lower the air suspension. That's the benefit of air suspension is when you put it in certain drive modes, right? It'll raise or lower the suspension automatically so that you can get the best possible driving experience. Woo! That's cool, kind of lit up. Um, yeah, the V6 is pretty good. Now I've driven all Grand Cherokee powertrains and here's my personal opinion. Um, the V6 is great for fuel economy and simplicity. The V8, not so great for fuel economy, but also is very simplistic and great for power. That's what you want. The 4xe, not simplistic, but it gives you great fuel economy um, and it has power. So you just got to decide which route you want to go, right? If you just want simplicity and fuel economy, here you go. If you want power and you want something that is tried and true, 5.7 Hemi, but if you're willing to take a risk with the new 4xe, then right, it's gonna give you fuel economy and power. So it's, as long as that thing ends up being reliable long-term, then that will probably end up being the powertrain to go for. So now we're gonna pop this up into the highest ride height setting. And I'm also gonna do the sway bar disconnect. So like I said, press the button, disconnect in progress, boom, wait. Sway bar disconnected. So if you guys are wondering, why would you want to disconnect the sway bar? This has independent and front and rear suspension, which is not known for articulation. The sway bar disconnect gives us a little bit of front end articulation. And what that is important for is keeping the vehicle level when you go over bumps. So going up this little curb here. Okay, what I want you guys to pay attention to, and I believe I'm in just regular four wheel drive. Okay, so I'm gonna get up the curb. Okay, so just one wheel is on the curb. And notice it's very, very slightly tilted to the side, but it's very minimal. I'm gonna take a step back now and go off the curb. Okay. Now I'm going to reconnect the sway bar. Give it a second. You have to back up a little bit for it to do its thing. Still blinking at me. There we go. Okay, now sway bar is reconnected. So I'm gonna do that same little curb maneuver. Okay, up to the curb. Okay, on with one wheel. Okay, so it's tipped significantly more to the side. And I wonder if it'll let me do the sway bar disconnect while I'm articulated. It's actually fun to test out this stuff. I don't think it's gonna do it. Yeah, it, it won't let you do it while you're articulated. So we're gonna go down again. I probably look like such an idiot to, okay, sway bar disconnected. So it's probably hard to tell via the GoPro view, but you can feel it in person because when you have the sway bar disconnected, it doesn't really feel like you're, you're going up, but it doesn't feel too, like you're going up too much. It stays pretty dang uh, level. And so that extra articulation is obviously gonna help out in off-road circumstances, but obviously that doesn't apply to the back ends of the Trailhawk because, well, the sway bar disconnect is just for the front end, but it's better than nothing. And so in terms of just regular unibody crossovers, this is by far the best that you can get besides the Land Rover Defender, which is basically what this is in, I guess, direct competition with in a sense. But there's new Grand Cherokee Trailhawk fully loaded. Let me know what you guys think. That's gonna sum things up for our video on this Jeep Grand Cherokee Trailhawk. Again, a huge shout out and thank you to the Larry Miller Jeep Chrysler in Provo for giving me some time with this Trailhawk. Check out the intro in the description down below. I'll see you.